I have a folder of images already open, but let me show you a couple different ways that you can navigate to the folders that you're looking for. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see that there are a couple of different categories. First, there's your favorites or watched folders. By clicking and dragging folders that you know you're going to access on a regular basis to the left-hand side of the screen, these will automatically be at the top of the left-hand panel every time you open Browse. I like to add a couple of different favorites of folders that I know I'm going to be working through a lot. If I'm working on a wedding, I like to add those weddings up on the left-hand side. Underneath are your local drives. These are external hard drives that you plug into your computer or the hard drive that's actually in your computer. You'll see that On One University is highlighted. This is the computer I'm working on right now. And if I click on the left hand arrow, it'll open up and show you the folder path of how I got to the folder of images you're looking at right now. I'm going to go ahead and close that up. And underneath, you'll also see cloud storage. This is a way for you to access images that you might have on Dropbox, Google Drive, or OneDrive. Now, searching through your local drives can get a little complicated, especially because if you're working on a computer like the one I am, there might be multiple users and way too many folders to search for. One of my favorite little shortcuts is by going up to the file menu at the top of your screen and jumping down to Browse Desktop. If I go ahead and select that option, it automatically jumps to my desktop. You'll see this is my video folder on the left-hand side, and there are a couple of other folders I can go into. I don't have to search for which drive I'm going to, which user I'm working with, and so on. It just sends me right to the desktop where I know that's exactly where I want to be. I'm going to go ahead and double-click inside Liz's video folder. Once inside, there are a couple of other folders I'm going to need to go into. I'm going to double click on Photos. And then in here, I have three different photo folders. You'll see any time that you have a folder that has images inside, it will randomly pick a thumbnail for that folder. Any folder that is a favorite or watched folder will have a heart on the inside of the icon. Again, to be able to add a folder to your favorites, just click and drag it over to the left-hand side. It'll open up that folder and show you all of the images inside. Up at the top of the screen, you'll also see that there is a folder path bar. This gives you the ability to figure out where a specific folder is on your computer. So this folder of images, Chelsea and Corey, is inside Photos, which is inside Liz's video folder, and so on. I can click on any of these to jump back into that specific folder. Let's go ahead and double click on this Graham and Caroline's wedding. We'll jump inside. Now, on the left, right at the top, you'll see that I have two folders here print edits and web edits. Whenever I edit a photo, I place the originals in one folder and then I place my print edits and my web edits in separate folders. Now I've gone through and edited a couple of these images, but I might want to go back and choose another one to edit that I might have missed. To take a closer look at any image, just double click on that photo and it'll zoom in for you. On the right hand side of the screen, you're going to see your navigator pane. You can zoom in and take a closer look at anywhere in your image. Inside that navigator pane, I can click and drag the small box around to take a closer look at specific areas of the photo. To zoom back out, just click on your image one more time and it'll jump back to the full view. Also on the right hand side is your metadata pane. This is where all of the information that's logged into the file exists. Things like file name, dimensions, the exposure, ISO, and many other options. You can make adjustments to the metadata on the right hand side as well. Up on the top right hand corner, you'll be able to see an arrow key. This is the first photo out of 48 photos, and I can click on that arrow key to go to the next image. I can also use the arrow keys on my keyboard to jump through the photos very quickly. You'll notice that they automatically pop up and I don't have to wait for them to load, which is really great. If any of the images are starred or labeled, you'll be able to see that at the bottom of the screen. Let's go ahead and jump back into the library view so we can see all of the images together. 
You can do that by going up to the top of your screen and clicking on the folder in the folder path bar. You can click on the back key in the top left hand corner, or you can hit the G key on your keyboard. That will also jump you back to your library view. Now there are a couple of other options that I want to introduce you to while you're browsing. You'll notice that all of my thumbnails are square, yet a lot of these photos are not square. You can adjust that by going up to the View menu at the top of your screen. You'll see that I have square thumbnails checked. I really like this option because I can get a closer look at my images, but if this isn't really what you're looking for, you can go ahead and turn that option off, and now you'll be able to see the photos, whether they're portrait or landscape, in all of their glory. Back inside that view menu, you'll also see that there are a couple of other really great options. If you want to be able to see the file name with your image, you can go ahead and select Always Show File Name. I'm very specific about how I name my files, and so you'll see each one of them has a name, a date, and a number. If I'm looking for a specific number, it's a lot easier if I can see those file names. One of the other really great options that I want to point out in that view menu is the smaller or bigger thumbnails. You can go through and use the plus or minus buttons on your keyboard, and you can make those thumbnails a little bit bigger, or you can make them a little bit smaller, depending on what you need. The last option down at the bottom that I want to make sure I point out is the sort drop-down menu. Right now, we're sorting all of these images by file name, but if I want to be able to sort them by any other option, I can click open this drop-down menu, and I can choose the rating, the file size, the date it was captured, and so on. There's also a show subfolder contents box. I really like this option as I like to put my print and web edits in separate folders. By checking this, I'll be able to take a look at those edits, and that can sometimes make it a little bit easier if I know exactly what I'm looking for. I can turn that back off if I want them to go back into their original folders. The last thing that I'll mention about browsing inside of Perfect Browse is the left-hand shortcut panel. This, again, is a really great way to access images in specific places. Right at the top is the option to click and jump straight to your desktop. Underneath will open your Pictures folder. Next, if you click on this heart inside of a folder, it'll open up your Favorites or Watched folders. Next, by clicking below, these will be your local drives. This is the computer that I'm working on right now. Underneath is going to be your cloud storage devices. I work with Google Drive, so that'll be the only one that will pop up, and I can take a look at the images in there. And the last will be a shortcut to my albums. I have one album of photos right now, my favorite photos, and I'll be able to access that from here as well. Again, it's a quick way to be able to find specific spots on your computer so that you can find the images that you need quickly and easily.